Hello everybody, uh, my name is Olivier Archer and this video I'm going to talk about uh, my the porting of the Sploxy Mobile from the UDK to make a PC version on uh, Unreal Engine 4. Uh, well, it's, it's okay, I mean, I'm really liking the new Unreal Engine 4, it makes things a lot prettier, a lot easier. And then, uh, since I'm not targeting mobile anymore, I have a lot more freedom to add shaders and stuff while well, not really adding any now. Uh, but I'm reusing all the assets and I'll change things around for um, when, I, uh, when I need to change, like I need to add an exit and stuff like that. So, so far this is what I have. Basic menu, that barely works. And I got the dude rolling. It's a bit uh, finicky at the moment, it's way too fast, I have a dynamic camera, his animations, uh, a shock detection when he hits the walls too fast, um, he breathes, he blinks, he closes his eyes, you can't really see now, but yeah, he closes his eyes. Um, and yeah, I mean, I still need to work on the controls because it's a bit finicky, and what? like going down this is not easy oh well maybe not that was a hard hit so yeah he keeps the momentum weird uh, too much I'll show you how I'll go through the blueprints and s to see how everything is done wow um, in the blueprints it looks like this. So basically I have the inputs. I started off with the rolling ball template that Epic provides and I have like the their inputs that they did. But I changed the way that they handle the the movement before their original system uses a torque based system and I wanted to use a velocity based system to kind of recreate the same feeling as the original Sfoxy so he could climb on walls. So basically I take the axis value and then I multiply it by the ball torque, which is a variable, which I'm not using torque, which is over here point 0.4, which multiplies by this, because I have an axis value of like 200, so I could get more sensitivity, but I still need to tweak that out. So it basically it's point 0.4 times 100, which is value of 40 at max speed. And then um, we add the current speed and we clamp it because we don't want it to go too fast so like the max speed is uh, 1500 we recreate the vector and then we apply it to the set, set linear, linear velocity <laughs> and then uh, there's the compare float so if the axis is back to zero that means if you're not touching the controller the joystick it brings the camera back down uh, by just minusing the vectors. So it slowly brings the, well, actually quickly brings the camera back down to you. And then when you are actually still shooting or moving the joystick, it actually pulls the camera up and there is um, a detection that checks your velocity so it doesn't go all the way out. It only goes all the way out when you're going really fast. And that's why there are these clamps. So basically, it just um, sets the uh, target arm length of the spring arm of the camera. So it's pretty easy. Uh, that wasn't in the UDK. I don't think so. Not in Kismet, anyway. Uh, so basically, yeah, it's it's a pretty s simple system to do uh, a dynamic up and down camera based on velocity. And then there's the blinking animation, which is just sets two models hidden over um, a delay. So, yeah, it's pretty simple. I don't know if there's an easier way to do it. Um, there's a breathing system, which I think is kind of weird, because uh, uh, I could have just used a timeline to do it, but I wanted to try and do it this way through just a world scale. So it's an event tick that just grows the dude for a certain amount. There's obviously a limit so he doesn't get too big or too small. And then it, after a random delay it kind of just goes to the opposite animation so it just loops between those two growing and shrinking, growing and shrinking. 
Um, I don't know if I should, yeah, that's pretty simple. And then this is kind of a bit, took a little bit to figure out because um, back in the old Unreal Engine, there was just, you know, uh, you could set the event to tell to only trigger when it, uh, th the actor got hit at a certain amount of um, force. And then, so it wasn't obvious that normal impulse was the force, and then it gives you like um, a vector of three values, but I just wanted one vector, like how hard is the little dude hitting something. So the vector length, you can actually just change it into one number, divide it by a thousand, because that number is huge. And then, um, it also depends, like the faster the, ob the your character is going, the bigger you want that number to be, because uh, it just gets bigger. And then so like when he hits at a force of 350, it just triggers the the knockout event function, whatever. So it disables the input for a little while. It toggles uh, the red mesh. Uh, so it, this all goes on for one second. Then you get back the input and it re-toggles back uh, the current meshes. Oh, I just noticed there could be a little issue there. Um, I think I've about covered it. Uh, I will run the game in in simulation so we can see everything in motion. Uh -huh. Don't really need to see. Just want to see what happens in the blueprints. So yeah, when so that's how it kind of looks in motion, and then knock out happens there and then the camera's always going on all oh, right and there's also a force that happens when he's falling it adds an extra gravity because if not he kind of he's kind of floating and I don't want to just increase the general bro world gravity because I know why he's floating because of the way that the velocity is handled so it's pretty cool to see it in action But yeah, I hope I, I hope you enjoyed watching. I know it was probably kind of boring. I should probably I don't know. Thanks for watching.